Okay, I think we're live. Yay! <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, I'll get this party started. I'm Audrey Hogan. I'm a youth services librarian at the Fairfield County District Library. And I am Mary Roebuck. Um, I am currently double checking to make sure that our stream went live. Um, I'm, a, I'm an adult services uh, librarian. Um, I also do teen uh, stuff. And I am going to be juggling a cat. So you're probably going to see this fellow a few times. I have one place I can record. And it's a place where Bert likes to come visit. So <laughs> he will be making appearances. Oh, it looks like we are definitely live because people are saying hello. Hello, people. Oh, good. Hi. Hi, Leah. Um, but yes, in case anyone doesn't know, we are we just watched the Youth Media Awards um, the, at the ALA. I think it was their midwinter meeting. Um, and hey, Tara. And uh, we're just here to chat about the awards, what won and what we're excited to see went on. <laughs> yes, and we're very excited about things. If anyone's tuning in who doesn't know the lingo, ALA is the American Library Association. And um, and it's like the kid lit Oscars. So we wait all year to watch this. I, I'm a little bit more fanatic about it perhaps than Mary, but she's humoring me. <laughs> But there were a lot of comic books that won this year, so it gave me something to get excited about. <laughs> we are both super into graphic novels. Um, hey, more people are joining. Hello, Hello. Shannon. And um, so that's where we thought we would start this year as how many graphic novels won. I counted a grand total of eight graphic <laughs> novel winners. There we go, eight. A whole yeah, there eight. were a lot. There was exciting. so many, um, and they won in categories that they don't usually win in. Um, so that's awesome. For example, there was the Sydney Taylor Award for Jewish representation, and um, was it an honor or a winner? Dancing at the Pity Party. That was. I can't remember if it was an honor or a winner. I think it was an honor. I think um, it was too. But my favorite part about that book is the uh, subtitle. And I say this as someone who just had their dad die. Um, the dead, it's a dead mom graphic memoir. So <laughs> it's the best way to cope is by just going right at it. <laughs> yes. I, I also lost a very dear family member this past summer. And I was reading that book more or less when that happened. And if there's such a thing as a gentle read for grief, it's that book. It's a really good book. Um, but I don't know the graphic novel has ever won in that category before. So that oh, yeah. was great. Um, yes, you, Allison says at least you know what you're getting into with that book. Yes, it's very blunt on the cover. Like the trigger warning is there. It's great. Um, yes. Another one. Um, so I usually pay a lot of attention to the Stonewall and it went by really fast during the awards. But the one that I caught that I was thrilled by was the one that I knew for sure was a um, middle grade. And I actually have it checked out from the library and it's here. Ooh. It's called Beetle and the Hollow Bones and it's by Eliza Lane. And again, mm -hmm. I don't know if a graphic novel has ever won um, a Stonewall honor, at least not for the middle grade age category and I've shown this on lattes and like with librarians before I love the art the art yeah. is amazing I love the color palette one of the characters is a cat skeleton an animated cat oh is that what the hollow bones is <laughs> yeah well her family is the hollow bones family another one of the characters is this cute little ghost uh -huh. um, Beetle is the main character and she's a goblin and she's pretty awesome. So I love that this book won. It is such a good book. It's really, I, I have a low tolerance for twee. I don't like twee, but this is like Halloween cute. <laughs> and it's awesome. Does it have vibes of, um, what is it? Nightmare Before Christmas? 
Yeah, only less spooky. Okay. Like, like that can Tim Burton can be a little gross. Yeah, and I don't <laughs> think that this is gross. That's good. Like the 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 cute side of that. Mm-hmm. So sort of mm-hmm. similar as genre. Yeah. Um. So, but again, like they just kept popping up in places where they don't oh. pop up. Um. And when stars are scattered by Victoria mm-hmm. Jameson and Omar Muhammad won um, a Schneider Family Book Award honor. And mm-hmm. that's also amazing. That one takes place in, uh, is, is a memoir. It's a graphic novel memoir. Mm-hmm. And Omar Muhammad and his younger brother Hassan spent like 12 years in a refugee camp in Africa. Mm-hmm. And it's, um, middle grade for about 10 years old, give or take, um, of living in a refugee camp and what it's like to grow up in a refugee camp. And it's really amazingly well done. And the Schneider Family Book Award is for um, representations of people with disabilities. And Hassan, the younger brother, has um, seizures and is developmentally disabled and delayed and can only say one word. And it's just really amazingly well done. So I didn't even think of it for winning a Schneider, but then it won. And I'm like, that makes so much sense. That's such a good book. So, but again, I don't know that that category has ever won a, gotten a graphic novel before. So yeah. I keep going on another, this topic. <laughs> another category like that might be the Prince. Again, I don't, I mostly pay attention to these awards normally just to see what I, to make sure I ordered everything I should have been ordering. Um, but Dragon Hoops, I don't think it won the top of honor, but it, it got an honor award um, from Gene Lu and Yang. That was exciting to see. Um, he, I mean, he always gets a lot of attention, but he's getting a lot of attention again this year, both for Dragon Hoops and for Superman Smashes the Clan. Um, they're ending up on a lot of best of lists. So I, I was not excited. I was not surprised, but very excited to see Dragon Hoops make it. Yeah. So I, again, I haven't read it yet, but it looks really good. Um, I've read Dragon Hoops. It's amazing. I keep forgetting about Superman Smashes the Clan. I keep meaning to read that one, but I haven't gotten to it yet. It's supposed to be really good. And I guess it's it's uh, one thing I recently heard about it. It's great, not just because it's all about Superman saving the day. It's um, It also incorporates, like a, I guess, a specific family who is fighting back against the clan. So it's, it's more like Superman's helps save the clan or smash the clan so <laughs> yay every man does a lot of the smashing yeah so <laughs> we can all be superheroes you can't just leave it up to the people at the top doing it all you gotta help yourself a little i think that message yeah that's, that's a good one cool. yeah. you'll have to tell the alex awards is that the award for like adult stuff that's readable for teens yes that's what that one is yeah because that one had two comics that had uh, Durf Back, Durf's Kent State, and um, Ali Brosh's Solutions and Other Problems, which always gives us a problem, speaking of other problems, uh, when it comes to where in the heck we put it in the library. <laughs> is it an essay? Is it a graphic novel? Is it a yeah. memoir? Yeah. yeah. It just got moved to, 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 graphic, to, to the graphic novel section, so... <laughs> It was it was in our in our eight um, hundreds, but now it's in in comic eight hundreds for now. We might change our minds. We reserve our, the right to do that. <laughs> That's fair. I feel like it might get checked out more in the comic. 800s. That's what. That's what Allison and I thought, and yeah, as Allison agrees. She was very excited about the adult book, books category. It's always an exciting one. <laughs> yeah, and in our little count, like so, Mary and I were texting each other while we were watching. Um, while we were watching and we were texting each other and um, I was counting all of the graphic novels and I'm like, oh, we got another one. Um, and we decided to count that one just because, I mean, it's more that than not, I guess. Yes. It's a mix. Yes. We can count yeah. it. Um, <laughs> I think it's listed as a graphic novel. I think it's listed as a graphic novel on Ingram, which is where we order our books, so. <laughs> That's fair. And Allison says, um, Mary and I change our minds a lot. Well, there is nothing wrong with changing your minds when you get fresh data 
So, <laughs> yeah. and the kids are gonna, she has, the kids are gonna ask on her to reread list. Do you remember that one? I don't remember that one. I know very little about adult books. So yeah. I am really oh. not the one to ask. I did see that and I thought I need to look that title up because it references children. So I should probably know what that is. Um, so it looks interesting though, for sure. Yeah, I just looked it up and it's got a nice cover. Step one. Yeah, it looks like it incorporates some 23 and Me. Maybe it's about figuring out, yeah, your genetic ancestry. Which sounds fun. That does sound fun. Um, yeah. Another one that I was sort of surprised by, because so I will acknowledge I don't pay as much attention. Wow, Allison has a lot. Oh, I'm looking the summary. Ah, the death okay. of Thomas and Savannah McClare's mother turns the world upside down. Well, people can read that. Yes, but thank you, Allison, for providing it. It looks yeah. very cool. Oh, viral, a viral, but in a good way. <laughs> Search for, for, for identity. That sounds exciting. It does sound exciting. I like that. Um, so I don't tend to pay a lot of attention to the Batchelder Award most years. Um, so that's the one for books in translation that are particularly good. Um, I don't always know which one I, I tend to recognize most of the books that pop up on these lists, except sometimes for the Alex Awards, because I don't know a ton of adult books. I'll acknowledge that. Um, but the but this year, I actually knew the Batchelder winner, and we own it. It's in our graphic novel collection, because it was, again, it was a graphic novel, and it was called um, Charlotte's, Charlotte's War or Catherine's War. Now I feel bad, because yeah. I'm talking about it. Like I should know, I have the list of winners, but it's a World War II graphic novel. And um, World War II is one of those historical periods that check out like crazy up in the children's department. So whenever a, a book on the subject pops up, we tend to get it. Um, Catherine's War, Shannon it just Catherine's War. I thought it was Catherine's War. I don't know where Charlotte came from. So I had honestly forgotten that that was a book in translation, but it was originally French. Like mm. I knew that, but I had forgotten. So that was another graphic novel. Mm -hmm. There were so many and they were all so good. Mm -hmm. um, one I forgot to talk about from the Prince Award, and it's not a graphic novel. It's okay. um, we don't have to just talk about graphic novels. <laughs> it was one that um because you know I, I usually look at these to see what i should buy and this year luckily it looked like i'd, I'd already gotten most of the stuff that i uh won these awards but um oh well, it looks like we froze are we still frozen leah's texting me are we still frozen i don't know I can't we look look good. we're not frozen anymore leah's texting okay <laughs> Oh, anyway, so in case in case uh, we were frozen while while I started talking about, it, I was backtracking to. Oh, good, Allison can see us. Um, I was leapfrogging off of our. Okay, Shannon can see us, and Allison can see us. Good. Uh, we were leapfrogging off of our discussion of graphic novels back to the princes uh, to talk about one because I luckily had bought most of the ones that I wanted to buy from the winners already. Except I had missed um, Apple Skin to the Core, and I will admit it's probably because it's a um, a free verse memoir, and anything poetry is usually a blind spot for me. Um, if it ends up on enough lists, I'll 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 find it and buy it. But I, I my guess would be that the free verse nature of this one had it uh, escaped my attention. But it sounds really good. It's by um, Eric Gansworth who's an, an enrolled member of the Onondaga Nation, and it's um, just about his experiences growing up uh, on the reservation. Um, but it is semi-illustrated. So Ooh. I know there's some people that have been trying to get me to read a free verse book, so that might be the one. It's <laughs> I'm people. <laughs> uh, I am notorious for not loving reading books without pictures, so... Um, 
if you want me to read a free verse book or any book, make sure it's got some pictures and maybe draw some in the, in the, in the margins and maybe I'll read it. <laughs> So I'm not huge on poetry, but I like free verse novels because I feel like they cut out a lot of the unnecessary words. Mm -hmm. And um, hey, Sarissa, and yeah, Brown Girl Dreaming is truly amazing. Um, but they, it cuts out a lot of the unnecessary words and there's a lot of white space on the page and they're actually a really good sell for reluctant readers, especially reluctant readers who have to get a page count. Um, mm -hmm because it's sort of a little bit of a workaround. You can say, ah, you have to read, in, in youth services, we often get the assignment of, you have to read at least 100 pages. Well, it's a workaround for the 100 pages when there's a lot of white space, white space on the page. And they're often, because every word is so carefully selected, they really grab you and suck you in. And they're such a fast read, but they still tend to be very emotionally provocative. So, um, and I'm saying I know. a person who doesn't usually pick up poetry to read poetry, yeah. poetry that tells a story is somehow mm -hmm. different. Like I can do that better. Mm -hmm. So it is strange that, uh, I mean, I like short poetry. Um, one of my favorite weird people is Algernon Swinburne. Uh, who is famous for writing long poems. I've never read any of his poems, but I think it's hilarious that that's what he's famous for. And I have adopted him as a hair icon, which my hair is not very Swinburne right now, but that's in the long story for another time. But anyway, I know free verse is really popular and my history dictates that potentially I would probably like it, but I just haven't gotten into it yet. But it does very well in our collection that the free verse books that we have, um, they do really well. I now have to look up Algernon Swinburne's hair because both you and Allison say that it's great. So <laughs> his hair, <laughs> yeah. Charles, I, I think it's actually Charles Algernon Swinburne, but Algernon's a more fun name than Charles. Um, he's he's a big old weirdo. Oh, we froze again. Maybe I don't. At think least so. yeah. Weird. It, this. Well, I mean, I'm not seeing anything that looks like freezing. And last time, it looks like we didn't freeze for anybody else. Yeah. Maybe Leah's connection is just not good. Maybe. Or maybe we've got a bunch of people watching in the library and it's slowing yeah. us down. What if any can anyone else see us? Are we still going? Okay. It looks like we're mostly we're mostly okay. Now we're back. I think it might just be Leah, unfortunately. Um and hi Stephanie. You become interested in poetry thanks to KQED on NPR where the authors read some of their poetry. That sounds like a really great way to get into it. Cause you know, reading your own poetry, I, I think, I mean, you'd know what emotions you're going for. That would be really, I think that would be really the best way to get into it. That sounds like, a, I might have to check out that. Is it, is it a pod, does it come through as a podcast too or do you just listen to it on radio, Stephanie? And wait for her response. While we wait uh, for that response, I also, um, there are some really good slam poets on YouTube that some of my friends share with me sometimes. And, and that's really cool. Um, there are some really excellent like slam poetry things. Watch yeah. My cat just tried to grab my hand. Um, and, um, the, um, so yeah. Um, and I also subscribe to that poem a day website. Um, and I tend to like the older stuff more than the more modern stuff. I'll, I'll acknowledge that. Um, you ask a lot to play. Uh, KQ. Thank you. I, I will do that. I will actually ask Siri, but Siri might even hear me and do it <laughs> on her own. But she always does it when I don't want her to. Thanks for that recommendation, Stephanie. That sounds good. Or Steffi. Sorry, I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Um, so I'm going to backtrack slightly to awards, but I swear I'm not just going to like hog tie the conversation all the way back to graphic novels. We can talk about something else. Um, since you mentioned the princes, I'm going to go ahead and mention some new berries. Um, I was sort of surprised by some of the new berries in a good way. Um, the, the only two of them that I've read 
though most of them have been on my radar for a while, like and are on my to be read list, were The Honor, Fighting Words by Kimberly Brubreaker Bradley, which is amazing, by the way. Like it is very, very good. Um, it's the main character's name is Della. And her older Suki, sister Suki has gone through a Me Too kind of situation with their stepfather. And um, the way Vandela herself had to deal with some inappropriate touching. And that was the situation that got them removed from the stepfather's house and placed into foster care. And a lot of this is revealed in flashback. Um, and it, the story is actually told for while they're in foster care. Their foster mom's awesome. Um, at first, you're not so sure, but as you get to know her, you realize that she's she's really cool. Um, what I really like about it is that an adult reading the book is able to fill in all of the blanks, but it's written in such a way that it's not super graphic. So kids are going to be able to fill in the details of what happened to the older sister based on what they already know about the topic. So kids who are themselves victims will be able to relate and kids who don't know much about it will still be able to know, oh no, bad touch, bad situation, not good, not good, without having to like be traumatized by what they're reading. So like she walks a really fine line with, like she does such a good job. And Della is hilarious that you can read a book like this and laugh is super well done and it's a matter of fact about like poverty Della's best friend and her mom lived in a car for a while and it's just there and it's just matter of fact and their mother is incarcerated for using meth and that just is matter of fact it's just there and it's we don't see a lot of books that talk about that sort of thing in the kid world. Yeah. yeah and a lot it, but it's the reality that a lot of kids are living through and it is there and I just appreciated that book on so many levels. And I am thrilled that it won recognition. Yeah. And the other book on the list that I have read was the winner. I'm so thrilled I read the winner. It's really vindicating. I actually have the arc. Um, when You Trap a Tiger by Ty Keller. And it's magical realism. And it's to a degree that's almost a little trippy because you're not 100% sure if the tiger is real. Um, and that's all I'm gonna say about it. There's a big magical tiger and you're not sure if the tiger is real. And at the end of the book, you still kind of don't know for sure. And the answer is, does it matter? I guess. Um, Very important update. Uh, Check out those links to see what uh, Swinburne's hair looks like. Uh, the Wikipedia one should be the one that has um, the best one. Uh, it, it's one, he's got very epic wavy red hair. I know, that's what you came here today for was talk about an old white man's hair, um, but that's what you're getting. Well, I'm going to forcibly drag the story back yeah. to the Korean American um, person's book. Um, I also love because there's a lot of Korean mythology worked into the book, and I love that. I love when you get to read about other cultures' mythology in books. I think that's super cool. So there's a lot of stories within the story in this. They're worked in really well. Um, it's about storytelling. Um, the main character, and of course I'm forgetting her name, Lily, her homoni, her grandmother has fallen ill. So they have to move back in with her grandmother. And um, anyway, it's how do you make her better? Is she ill because of cancer or is she ill because of supernatural forces? And it goes from there. It's one of those books that's hard to talk about without getting a little spoilery. So I'm gonna put the book down now. And stop talking before I give it all away. Um, Allison mentions the fun of ambiguity in books, and I do have to agree. Agree. Is it now? Is it just ambiguous so far as the magical realism, or does it have an like an unreliable narrator? I really like an unreliable narrator. One of the trends this year is that um, a lot of the books have first person narrators. Hmm. So it's not so much that the narrator 
who is Lily in this case, is unreliable so much as that she is a kid. So she's only seeing, you're only really seeing things from Lily's point of view, which is limited because it's from just her point of view. Um, and um, Fighting Words is also from first person narrator from, I think this is first person narrator from Lily. Yes, um, Fighting Words is also first person Della's telling the story. So um, that kind of, limits it in a way because you can only see it from the narrator's point of view. And again, it's not so much that they're unre unreliable so much as they're kids. They only know what they've been told. They only know the information they've been given access to. Um, it's not like with adults who, I feel like adults have a little bit more control over being willfully ignorant, whereas kids are sometimes kept ignorant like for their own good kind of a thing. So. Leah is also a fan of an unreliable narrator. Yeah. No, those <laughs> are very cool. Advice. <laughs> those are very cool. So like one of the things that Lily's dealing with in here is that her mom's not necessarily telling her everything right from the beginning. because She doesn't want to like overwhelm her or scare her. She wants Lily to stay optimistic about her hormones, like prognosis and stuff like that. So that's, is that an unreliable narrator? Like that, that's a philosophical question that could last us for a while, but it is really good. Um, it's very good. Um, but another Newberry winner had a really good day. Christina Sorntornvat won um, two, two Newberry honors for all 13, what was the full title? Um, all 13, the incredible cave rescue of the Thai boys soccer team and a wish in the dark. And both of those have been on my to be read lists for months, mm -hmm. but I didn't actually think either of them would win any Newberry recognition because wish in the dark is fantasy and they hardly ever win like straight up epic fantasy. It's set in a either Thai or Vietnamese. I've only read the first couple of chapters. I'm so sorry, but like far East Asian inspired fantasy world, which is super cool all by itself. You don't see that a lot. Um, and all 13 is nonfiction, Hybert. And um, that all also hardly ever wins Newberry. So she won two Newberry honors in one year. She was super busy. And I'm looking forward to reading those this week. Yeah, but uh, it made me curious enough to at least Google her, but it, she, her, her stuff might not. Does her stuff have pictures in it? All 13 does because it's okay. nonfiction. So there's pictures and there's graphics and stuff. I don't know how many because I haven't actually read it yet. Yeah. I haven't <laughs> flipped through it yet. Yeah. One other exciting thing that I feel like we, we can't leave without mentioning, um, the number of Ohio winners also. Um, uh, Jackie Jacqueline Woodson uh, won the Credit Scott King Award for uh, Before the Ever After. Um, who else? We had Dirt Back Dirt also, from Ohio. Also a novel in verse. As oh, it is? Jacqueline Woodson's books. So, so that's another trend. We have a bunch of novels in verse, a bunch of comics, a bunch of people from Ohio. Um, we had Black Girl Unlimited by Echo Brown, which is both set in Cleveland and Echo Brown is from Cleveland. Um, Dirk Backdurf's from Cle from Akron, I think, maybe. He's from Ohio somewhere. And there's one other one, I think. I, I thought I wrote it down. I looked it up. Kekla Magoon is not from Ohio. I thought she was, but she is not. She is still super amazing, though, and she won a um, Legacy Award. The one that used to be the Laura Ingalls Wilder Award and is now has been renamed to something else. Bert, you are stealing the show, which is okay. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I, I keep putting him off and then he comes back, but I thought he was gonna stay distracted for the rest of the show, but now he didn't. <laughs> I'm actually sort of surprised that my cats have not been glomming on me because they were all while we were setting up and talking and they were being a very big distraction during the actual show, but something about live casts terrifies them and then they run away. <laughs> okay. Can you think of any other highlights? We hit, I think we hit most of them. 
Um, the Ohio books, the I, comic books. The one award that they only do every other year is the, and again, I'm forgetting the official name of it, but it's the Award for Native American Representation. Hmm. And so this is their off year. Um, but we still yeah, because I don't remember it from this year. It's a new one. Um, and so they didn't do it this year. They did it last year. They've only done it for a few year cycles now. But we still had some pretty good representation, that Apple to the Core book being one of them. And also the um, Caldecott winner, We Are Water Protectors, is a really cool yeah. own voices um, book with Native American content. So that is awesome. I'm glad that even though they didn't get their award this year, they still got recognized representation. by a couple of the big ones. I think that's super yeah. cool. Alaka, I think that's why everyone shows up. But well, the Newberry too. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, I have to acknowledge I have not read most of these. Um, not because I'm not interested, but because COVID kind of messed up when we got a lot of our picture books this year. I don't know that we've gotten a lot of these yet. If they've been backlogged, or if we got them but they immediately went out on hold. And maybe when they were returned, they just got intershelved. And so I didn't see them and realize they were new. Um, I'm way more excited about chapter books. I'll acknowledge that. Um, so I'm looking forward to looking these up and checking them out. Um, but I have heard of most of them. I've seen Outside In, and it is beautiful. That was one of the honors. I've, I think I've seen Me and Mama, and it's also beautiful. It's and that one won some other award too. It won, it won two awards. I can't remember what the other one was, but I'm, it did win one other one. I'm pretty sure it was the Coretta Scott King Illustrator Award. Oh. And yes, Allison says definitely blame COVID. She would know um, <laughs> over in our tech services department. Um, Shannon says we have all but one of the Caldecotts. That's good. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very glad. Um, I just personally haven't seen them yet because of how they came in. We didn't get to set them to the side to flip through them before they went out into general circulation the way they usually do. Um, so I, I missed a lot of the picture books, shame on me. So I get to catch up now. Yes. Um, <laughs> but the place inside me and the Catman of Aleppo for the Caldecott, they were a little different because they skew older than yeah. like a lot of Caldecotts do. And there is nothing wrong with that because the Caldecott does go up to age 14, just like the Newberry. Um, mm -hmm. Catman looked really good. It's yeah. it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a guy in the yep. city of Aleppo who realizes how many stray cats there are, and so he decides to take care of them. And he has yeah, set so during the Syrian civil war. It sounds like it was about displaced cats during the war that he decides to take care of. Yeah, so it looks really good. But yeah, lots of good things. Hopefully, everyone found something. To, it sounds like at least. Um, what was that that other one from earlier? It sounds like people had some, got some things to add to their to be read list. Um, any any last thoughts, Audrey? <laughs> um, I do just want to mention that um, I will be doing a book talk on Thursday as part of our regular programming once a month. I do book talks, and I will be talking more in depth about some of the award winners that I've read and that I really liked. And that I think will make particularly good recommendations, like high interest recommendations to kids. So if anybody's interested in hearing me babble some more about books that I like, again, I promise it won't be all graphic novels. Um, <laughs> she babbles very well. <laughs> thank you. I try. Um, I, um, that'll be posted Thursday at four o'clock. And um, Oh, thank you, Allison. We appreciate the thought. And, and Shannon has looked at the Caldecotts. She said the illustrations are wonderful. Um, and I trust her judgment. She usually runs our mock Caldecott. She really knows her stuff. She's she's my boss. She's the head of the youth services department. Hopefully, fingers crossed, next year we'll be able to do our mock Caldecott again. Um, that's the award that's for children's illustration. Um, I, Appreciate not everybody's quite as obsessed with these as I am. I should probably explain what the awards are. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to do that again next year. It's just kind of hard to do it in virtual format where you can't like look at and absorb the pictures. 
<laughs> All right. Thank you for tuning in. Well, yes. Thanks everyone for coming. I hope you had some fun and we definitely did. So we'll say goodbye. <laughs> Bye.